So the real interest rate, that's what we're going to be interested in here. Uh, and so I'm going to just kind of flip over to some place where I've got a little bit more room to, to scribble down some of our work here. And a couple of things I want to notice. So when you look at the nominal interest rate, the way effectively that is calculated is what's the total amount I'm going to pay back at the end of a year, 21000 minus the principal divided by the principal. If you were to calculate that, it's 1,000 over 20,000, which is the 0 0.05, the 5% interest. So what we want to do now when I talk about real interest is figure out, okay, in one year I pay back $21,000. But as we learned earlier in the semester, as the cost of goods and services increases, $1 in the future isn't necessarily equivalent to $1 today. And so that's true, right? So when I, when I got $20,000 today, that was worth so much beer and pizza. So 20,000 today that I got when I took out the loan Well, in this case, it was worth a car, right? I could buy one car with that amount of goods, with that amount of money. Now, in one year, I owe $21,000. And what I really want to ask or know is, well, how much consumption then am I giving up in the future as a result of paying this loan? And so what I need to do is I need to take the $21,000 and adjust it for inflation, In other words, I need to convert that in terms of today's prices. How much beer and pizza will I give up when I pay the $21,000 or the $1,000 in interest? So I need to convert the $21,000. You could go either way. You could convert the $20,000 into the future dollars or the $21,000 into today's dollars. And what I want to do is convert $21,000 in one year into today's dollars or prices. And we learned how to do that earlier in the semester. And what we're going to do, so the value in today's dollars is simply equal to the value in one year's dollars times the CPI today which was 100. That was in my slides in the uh, before we got here. So if I kind of flip back to that, I know the CPI today is 100 and the CPI in one year is 110. So we have 10% inflation between the two years. So it's 21,000 times 100 over uh, 110. And I believe that gets you to 19,000 dollars. So what that means is that the 21,000 in one year is equivalent to about $19,000 worth of beer and pizza in today's prices. So if I calculated my real interest rate, what I'm gonna give up in actual consumption goods, the picture looks a little different. So my real interest rate, if I follow the same idea as what we did up there, is the amount I owe in real terms is 19,000 minus the amount borrowed, the principal, divided by the principal. And that is actually equal to a negative number. It's equal to minus 0.045. So that means the real interest rate is minus 4.5%, or about 4.55% uh, if I didn't round it down like that. So that's a much different story. That says my interest rate, the interest I'm paying, is actually negative after adjusting for inflation. And that makes sense once we think about it, right? The, the prices of things went up by 10% 
and I only had to pay 5% in interest. So the difference between those two, roughly speaking, is going to tell me my real interest rate. And in this case, that was negative. The amount of interest I paid wasn't enough even to keep up with inflation. And so that suggests I may be getting a somewhat decent deal in borrowing this. If I was going to borrow, uh, this isn't too bad of a deal. So let's kind of come back here. Now, that's going to be a bit of a pain in the butt, right? So if every time I wanted to do this, I had to convert things from, I had to calculate the total amount of interest, convert it to real. I may not uh, get too far, be willing to do that. And so there's a shorthand way to do it which we call the Fisher equation. And the Fisher equation says, so I'm just gonna call R the real interest rate. And I'm gonna call pi the inflation rate. Okay, so uh, what the Fisher equation tells me is that my real interest rate, R, is going to be equal to the nominal interest rate, I, minus the rate of inflation, minus pi. Now that's not too bad. If I know the inflation rate, I know my nominal interest rate, I can make a quick calculation to calculate my real interest rate. And that can be negative if inflation is high enough relative to the nominal interest rate. So if we go back to our example, the nominal interest rate was 5%. The inflation rate was 10%. And so according to this, the real interest rate should be about minus 5%, which is very close to what we got when we did the actual calculation. So this is an approximation, but a pretty good one. As long as the interest rates are relatively low, uh, which typically they would be, uh, it's not gonna cause us too much problem. So you may be wondering, how did I get the inflation rate in our example? I took the CPI in one year from now, minus the CPI today, divided by the CPI today, which was 110 minus 100 over 100, which was the 10% inflation, which is how I came up with that. Okay, so I'll come back with one more quick short video here uh, to understand why it is that we care about the real interest rate.